On this Saturday night, state of emergency. Searching for a serious strategy with U.S. warships on alert in the Mediterranean, the president looks for options. After doctors inside Syria confirmed thousands were treated for symptoms of a chemical attack. To the crisis in Syria now, the White House is weighing its options against the Assad regime after reports that Syria's army used chemical weapons on its citizens. Doctors Without Borders, which has teams in Syria, confirms that thousands have been treated for symptoms of exposure to a chemical agent. Tonight, as the Obama administration considers its response, U.S. warships are on alert in the Mediterranean near Syria. We have two reports beginning with NBC's Ayman Mohadeen in Cairo. Ayman. Good evening, Lester. The international NGO Doctors Without Borders says it treated more than 3,600 patients on Wednesday, the day of the alleged chemical weapons attack, out of which more than 350 died as a result. Now, all of them, they say, displayed symptoms of neurotoxicity, an indication that perhaps chemical weapons were actually used. Now, the Syrian government has denied any responsibility and denies that it used chemical weapons. More importantly, today on Syrian state television, they showed images of chemical weapons that were allegedly found in areas that were controlled by Syrian rebels, an indication that perhaps it was the rebels that were responsible for launching these weapons. Meanwhile, the top top UN disarmament chief, the undersecretary general for the United Nations, arrived today in Damascus. She's been trying to press the Syrian government to give UN inspectors access to the site of the attack so that they can determine exactly what happened. And as the U.S. and other countries weigh a possible military option against Syria, a senior Iranian lawmaker today warned that any military intervention inside Syria would result in a regional war that would not end favorably to the United States or to its allies across the region. Lester. Ayman Mohideen in Cairo. Thanks. Now let's turn to NBC's David Gregory in Washington, where the president met with his national security advisors today. David, what are we learning? Well, what's clear, I think, this weekend, Lester, is that there's a new sense of urgency within the White House after this week's attack. The human costs in Syria have become just too high to bear. Despite that, there is disagreement, I can tell you, among the president's advisors about what should come next. Among the questions, what's the legal justification for military action and what would an attack accomplish? The intelligence community is trying to verify facts on the ground, and at this point, the White House is saying little. Only stressing that while the U.S. has a range of options available, the president will make an informed decision in a deliberate way rather than pursue quick action before all the facts are known. The president has described this week's alleged chemical attack as a, quote, big event with grave concern. Right now, the U.S. Navy has four guided missile destroyers in the Mediterranean, two well within firing range of any targets in Syria. Defense Secretary Hagel declined to discuss any specific force movements, but he left little doubt he thinks chemical weapons were involved, saying, quote, it appears to be what happened, use of chemical weapons. On the table, limited airstrikes, most likely cruise missiles launched from those destroyers, targeting key Assad military command posts. Government officials telling us the case for military action is taking shape. Military officials are warning that extremist figures like al-Qaeda are being drawn to the chaos in Syria like, quote, moths to a flame. You add chemical weapons to the mix and officials say that's why you're hearing the president start talking about core national interests being at stake here. Lester. David Gregory. David, thanks.